Hi, Teacher for Inclusion here. My name is Sheila Keeter, and today I'm going to talk about the um, American Literature Reading List in High School. So let's go ahead and pull up my share screen here. There we go. And we're going to take a look at the American Lit book list. So like the American classroom, the American literature book list hasn't changed much. Um, and first, let me preface this by stating that the reason why students are studying American lit in 11th grade is because they are also studying American history in 11th grade. Just like in 10th grade, they're studying world history, so they learn about world literature in 10th grade. Makes perfect sense. So one of the first classics that are studied is A Raisin in the Sun. And I think that this is definitely um, still relevant and should be taught. It's post-Civil War period, and it's about when dreams don't come true and what that can do to a person. We have The Crucible, which is another classic that is taught frequently in the American classroom. And I think the crucible is really important because we need to see where those Puritan ideologies come from and how they still pop up even in today's culture. The Great Gatsby, um, another classic that I think is important to be taught in American literature because it covers the woman's movement, which is something that you don't see frequently or even at all in, um, in literature throughout high school. The next one that I think is important and essential to, to teach is the House on Mango Street because we learn from the Latin perspective um, what it's like to be raised and grow up in a poverty-stricken poverty neighborhood. Um, and the House on the Mango Street does just that. Huckleberry Finn is a classic and I put it in here because I have to say, and I hate to say it because I love Mark Twain, but I think it's one that can go. Um, and I don't mean the book banned um, from any book list. I don't believe in that. I just mean for my personal taste, um, it's one that almost gets a little bit ridiculous um, at the end. I think it, it should be studied in college and that there's a lot of stuff that is at a higher level of thinking that should be studied in college. Um, but I think it's one that really doesn't need to be in the high school classroom. Their Eyes Were Watching God is another one that is covered frequently in the American Lit classroom. I love this book and I loved learning about it in college, but not high school. Um, I think students have a really difficult time connecting with this book and connecting with the characters. And although it is a beautiful piece of literature, it probably just isn't the best fit for our students today. The next one is Beloved, Beloved, and I think the same thing um, fits for this one. It's about a woman who slits her baby's throats at the beginning of a book in order to avoid them being taken into slavery or what she perceives to be possible slavery. And our students just cannot relate to that or even find a way to understand that on any level. It also has a lot of sexual um, metaphors in it like the cherry blossom tree in the beginning of the book. And it just is, although it's, again, a beautiful piece of literature, it just doesn't belong in the high school classroom with our students today. What I would teach instead would be Jacqueline Woodson's um, Brown Girl Dreaming. And I would continue to teach The Crucible. I would continue to teach Raisin in the Sun. I would add The Hate You Give. Um, I would add A Long Way Down, and I would add more um, of an African-American influence because the struggle is so long and um, different in different time periods. I would continue to teach the House on Mango Street for the Latin American struggle. Um, again, with uh, The Great Gatsby, 
to show the women's movement and the crucible to show that Puritan, um, those Puritan entrenched ideals that we still deal with today. The one um, book that's different on here is The Benefits of Being an Octopus. And the reason why I added this one is because it's about a young teenage girl who is growing up in a trailer who be that belongs to her mother's abusive boyfriend. And she has three younger brothers and sisters that she takes care of on a daily basis. And she doesn't get to have the option or opportunity to think about doing well in school. And I think that we miss this group or this population, this demographic of kids that we kind of overlook. And we have to be really careful about the word white privilege because there are groups of people that do not have white privilege. Um, and this particular girl fits into that category. So I added that one to add just the, um, the poverty stricken demographic, um, no matter what your background or culture is. I hope that you got some insights and ideas for your American literature classroom. I would love to hear what you use and that's all. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.